It seemed to be insurmountable, a mighty massif in the middle of the Alps, over 3,000 meters high, the Gotthard, the heart of Switzerland, narrow, craggy valleys extending from north to south. The mountain always required a great effort from those willing to cross it. Around the year 1200, the first mule track was established, taking its toll on the caravans of traders as they struggled to ascend. In the 19th century, the idea of executing a railway tunnel through the mountain was born, but it was seen like an absurdity. In 1989, when it was decided to build the world's longest railway tunnel, a group of men saw this as a chance of a lifetime. They are experts for rail technology. Their assignment, to entirely equip the Gotthard Base Tunnel for the passage of high-speed passenger and freight trains. Man and machine, advanced technology and raw mountain, all under the same vault. They called themselves Transtech Gotthard. Up to 14 million cars and trucks have been crossing Switzerland each year, resulting in huge traffic jams and generating noise and tons of greenhouse gases. The transfer of private and freight traffic onto rail mode was easier said than done. Because of Gotthard's topography, trains have been slowly and tortuously ascending loops and tunnels, crossing the top of the mountain through a 15 km tunnel and then descending via ramps to the valley beyond. The optimal solution, a level track straight through the base of the mountain, Gotthard Base Tunnel, no slopes, no diversions, a direct passage through the Alps. Milano Centrale, 8 o'clock in the morning. Hop on the train and attend a meeting in Zurich at 11. Travel time between the two cities, 2 hours and 40 minutes. Neat, the new railway link through the Alps, relieves road congestion and speeds up rail traffic. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is at the heart of this European mega-project, a 57-kilometre-long high-speed north-south connection consisting of two pipes. Four companies were brave enough to take on this huge challenge. A challenge consisting not only in the endeavour itself, but also in the environmental conditions required. As little impact on humans, animals and nature as possible. Eventually, it barely left any traces, except for the two portals. The achievement of this result has been possible thanks to the so-called installation yards, two base camps, so to speak, in order to ease the many activities in the tunnels two building sites to facilitate a third, legendary one. The energy required in the tunnel corresponds to a level for supplying a village of 15,000 inhabitants. That level is equally needed during construction as well as for the operating phase. Since the beginning of the project, ABAG was responsible for the energy supply. They installed the entire low-voltage grid that also feeds the Rail Technology Centre buildings. Trains passing through the tunnel instead need a traction power of 16.7 Hz, which is carried in the overhead line. This installation was assigned to 13 engineers of Arga 16.7 Hz, a joint venture of Balfour BT Rail and Kumla und Mata. This task has been highly ambitious, also due to the optimally tight frequency of train traffic. Consequently, the more trains travel through the tunnel, the more power is required. The power gets therefore to the locomotives, drives the machines and smoothens operations under all circumstances, even in 40 years' time. Or in other words, even after the millionth train. Meanwhile, trains travel up to 250 km per hour through the pipes, creating dynamic suction effects with the surrounding infrastructure. Wind speeds exceeding 300 km per hour hit contact lines and their supports, building prototypes, drafts and redrafts, construction plans, rigorous materials testing. 
all essential before the works in the tunnel could actually begin. Alone the plans for the contact lines works covered the area of three football fields, and they turned out to be excellent. The team completed its tasks without delays. The track used for the installation of contact lines had been completed only days earlier using an innovative on-the-roll installation method, the concrete train, a rolling concrete factory. Thanks to the concrete train, it was possible to build in the whole track system along the Gotthard base tunnel. The tracks are so-called slab tracks. They grant a smooth journey, keeping the maintenance costs low. The first punching in were the rail laying team. They preceded the activities up ahead in the bare tunnel, where a concrete, steel and high-precision measuring devices landscape prevailed. A job for the specialists of Balfour BT Rail and Heitkamp, who installed and rough-adjusted 3,000 rail supports along the first kilometre. Roughly, in this context, meant with an accuracy of 2 or 3 millimetres. A week later, the rails had to be in place with a tolerance limit of half a millimetre. Only then, the concrete train could roll in. After 19 days, the team had completed two more kilometers on its journey towards the goal. On October 31, 2014, the entire track was completed. A big day for Arge Fahrbahn and the end of an important milestone of this rail technology mission. Every door, every light and every ventilator in the Gotthard base tunnel is supervised from the control centers in Erstfeld and Poleggio. It took 10 years for the engineers and technicians from Alcatel-Lucent to develop the perfect telecommunication system with built-in redundancy. Their job was to equip the tunnel with a brain, a nervous system and sensors, all working with a common operating language. During the trial phase, specialists were simulating the information from 70,000 data points. Sensors can even trace loose connections. The system is designed to cope with all scenarios, including emergencies. In case of fire, the system can detect smoke, accurately determine the position of trains, automatically alert the fire brigade, issue loudspeaker announcements and switch to emergency lighting. The tunnel's radio telecommunications system broadcasts speech and data and also initiates emergency measures. In the tunnel itself, data and speech are transmitted via the so-called leaky feeder. This one cable is vital for train traffic. It's the link between the train and the control center and delivers data about location, speed limits and signaling settings. Another important step towards the destination. The signal is green. The ETCS Level 2 train control system gives the go-ahead to every train and monitors the moving rail traffic. Every 30 minutes, a bundle of three freight trains at a speed of 120 km per hour or one passenger train at 250 km per hour can travel through each tube, optimally utilizing both tubes and bringing trains safely through the tunnel three minutes apart was a masterstroke. It was developed by a 50-person strong international project team made up of Thales engineers and technicians and tested over several years in the Gotthard lab in Zurich. In emergencies, the rail traffic controller at the command center in Poleggio decides whether a train must be stopped or led backwards out of the tunnel. Thanks to its redundant design, the system continues to operate as usual, even if individual elements fail. Four electronic interlocking systems, the radio block center and the train control technology with interfaces to SBB systems currently regulate the mix of passenger and freight trains. After 13 minutes of darkness, the train shoots out into the light. Mission accomplished. 20 million people profit from shorter travel times and better connections thanks to the rail technology of the Gotthard Base Tunnel.